Hello, my name is Brad. I'm going to be talking to you today about overpopulation. I'm going to ask and answer one simple question. Are we overpopulated? Now before we get into that, in Idaho, it's easy to say, no, we're not overpopulated. You look out in your backyard, you can probably see mountains. It's a three hour drive to McCall. On the way, it'll probably go through maybe three cities. Uh, so it's easy in the Northwest to look around and say there's plenty of room out here. But that's not what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at some of the denser cities, such as Chicago here, where the population density is much, much higher than it is here in the Northwest or in any centralized part of the United States. Um, it's really hard to judge an entire country based on certain regions. So these overpopulated so-called regions here versus the sparsely populated regions uh, where we live in uh, as a whole make up the United States. But our goal is to find that are there enough instances in these states that have overpopulated cities uh, to make an overpopulation problem? Is it something that we need to address? So first, before we go into anything, we need to address what is overpopulation. We need to define it. Now, Merriam-Webster defines overpopulation as the condition of having a population so dense as to cause environmental deterioration and impaired quality of life or impaired population. Uh, now, one thing before we get going any further, uh, to clarify, uh, we don't really have environmental deterioration in these big cities. They're called steel jungles for a region, reason. It's basically all false. Uh, all of the trees that are there have been planted artificially. All of the buildings are obviously man-made. Um, so the environment is, is not really a factor here. Also, resources. Uh, with our current economic situation, um, supply and demand chain, you're going to have unlimited resources here. If you want to go buy some food, it's going to be within a mile of you at least uh, at any given time. We're not going to run out of food. We're going to be having more food, more water than we're ever going to need to use just based on our transportation and technological improvements. What we're going to be focusing on is quality of life. Um, in these cities that have a, a very, very high density, is the quality of life lowered to the point uh, to where there's a big difference between these densely packed cities and the more sparsely packed towns uh, like I live in here in Meridian, Idaho? Uh, urban areas, or it's what, we're, what it's called, what we're going to be looking at here, mostly on the coast. I don't know if you can see from where you are, but there's uh, densely packed purple chains here on each coast whereas it's more white in the middle, signifying that it's, it's more sparsely populated. Uh, the urban areas of the United States currently, as of 2011, account for 80% of our population. So 80% live here and here, and 20% occupy this huge swath of land. Uh, so it's that 80%, the majority of Americans, that we're going to be investigating today. All right, like I said, there's plenty of land in the United States for us to move to. You know, there's places out here, you know, Wyoming, Nevada, Utah, that are just wide open. There's places for people to move, but oftentimes those in overpopulated areas do not have the means by which to, to go move to a new area, much less build a house in an open, empty area. So just to kind of nullify some of the questions of, you know, if we're overpopulated, how come there are big open mountains and plains with nobody in them? It's because of this. Some people don't have a choice to move from an overpopulated to a less populated region. Now, what we're gonna be focusing on in the limited time that we have today uh, is 10 states with the lowest quality of life according to a study done by Thomas Froelich and Alexander Hess. Uh, they are writers for 24 seven Wall Street. They did a study that measured uh, employment rate, income, homicide rates, and voter turnouts, kind of a little picking of each area of life. We have uh, work, money, safety, and community involvement here that we're going to be looking at to see what kind of quality of life do we have. And the lowest 10, if any of those lowest 10 show up as high population states or if a few of them show up, we can draw some sort of correlation between the population. So at number 10, we have Georgia, then New Mexico, Louisiana, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, West Virginia, Arkansas, Alabama, and Mississippi. Now, before we go any further, if you know anything about United States geography, right off the bat, those are not very densely populated states. But to further drive home that fact, none of those states have a population density of even one third of our highest dense, most five most densely packed states, um, including New Jersey, New York, California, and the like. Most of them 
are actually on the bottom half, which some of them you know, are on the bottom 10. Uh, all of them have less than 6,000 people per square mile. Compare that to New York with 27,000 people per, per square mile and New Jersey with 56,000 people per square mile. It's pretty obvious uh, that higher population density does not necessarily mean a lower quality of life. And again, overpopulation can be a relative term. There's lots of things that it withdraws uh, its meaning from. We know it's not resources um, and, and local wildlife because in many places those are infinite um, and artificial. So we, we can't base it off of that. But there are different areas that have better or worse quality of life and we found that it is not influenced by having an overpopulated state. So from this lens, from the viewpoint of a lowered quality of life because of living in an overpopulated state, we can successfully say that no, we are not overpopulated. Thank you.